Hello, I'm Mr. E-Tutor, your mystery tutor here at mysterytutor.com and welcome to video module 13-2. In this module, we'll be discussing the English section of the ACT. As I mentioned in the previous ACT module, one of the key things you're going to have to be very aware of when you take the ACT is the time factor, and the English section is perhaps the least forgiving in that regard. On the English section, you're going to have to answer 75 questions in 45 minutes, which even the most mathematically inept among us can tell is less than one minute per question, which can be quite daunting to a lot of people. So you're definitely going to want to hit the ground running and make sure you maintain a good pace. And one of the most important aspects of being able to do that is not reading the passage before you try to answer the questions. Only read the portions of the passage that you need to read in order to answer the questions. Many, many, many of the questions are going to be about things like comma usage or the formation of a possessive or something like that. And to answer those questions, you're only going to need to go back to read the underlined phrase and figure out how it should be restated. When you have questions that ask about the placement of a sentence or inserting longer phrases or things along those lines, then you will probably find that you need to go back and read the surrounding sentence or two uh, in the area that is local to that question. But you do not need to have read the entire passage to answer any of those questions. If you do read the entire passage and then go try to answer the questions, you're going to find that the time seems even shorter than it is. So do yourself a favor and practice answering the questions without reading the passages. You're going to find that it's actually not nearly as hard as most people think it is before they try it. Now the questions on the ACT English section are very similar to the improving paragraphs questions on the SAT writing section. And that means you're going to approach them in much the same way. You're going to rely on the critical reading skills and the basic grammatical skills that we talked about over in the SAT videos. Just like on the SAT, you're going to find that it's very important to pay attention to every single word, and also very important to have a rough familiarity with some basic grammatical concepts that you're going to see appearing over and over and over again. In my opinion, the best way to get ready for these grammatical concepts is to make sure that you have the free PDF study aid that you'll get when you put your name and email address into the box on the right-hand side of your screen. Um, even though that is for the SAT writing section, 99% of it applies to what you'll find on the ACT. Really, the only thing that's missing from there that you will find on the ACT is the discussion and usage of possessives. So basically, all you need to do is learn your possessives, add it to what is in that other uh, existing PDF, and you'll be fine. And if you don't know how to use possessives, I will explain it to you right now in about five seconds. First, all single nouns in English form their possessive by adding apostrophe s, no matter what letter they end in, and no matter what you might have heard to the contrary. That's the right way to form the singular possessive in English, always apostrophe s. The pronoun it forms its possessive just by adding an s, not it apostrophe s, just its. That is the possessive of the pronoun it. Finally, for plural nouns that end in s, the possessive is formed simply by adding an apostrophe. And if the plural noun ends in anything besides s, then you add apostrophe s. That's it. Those are the possessives, and you are going to see a fair amount of possessives that appear on the ACT. At least, you'll see more than you saw on the SAT, where there aren't any. Also, of course, just as on the SAT writing section, be on the lookout for misplaced modifiers. If you're not sure what those are, again, you can refer to the free study aid. You can also check out the solutions that are in this ACT book. Um, just like the College Board does whenever it provides solutions, the ACT provides solutions that are um, substandard at best, let's put it that way, uh, but they do sort of cover the basic grammatical things occasionally uh, correctly. <laughs> so you can get an idea of the misplaced modifiers just from looking in there if you want, or like I said, the free study aid will explain those. Finally, just like with the improving paragraphs questions from the SAT, if you are asked whether you should add a sentence, uh, choose to add the answer choice that will have the most in common with the ideas that already appear in the relevant portion of the passage. That's basically it when it comes to the ACT English section. It is pretty much uh, the SAT writing section, just longer and uh, with possessives added to it. Oh, and also, I mean, there are more uh, sort of reading-based questions, but the types of questions themselves are all roughly the same as what you would see on the SAT, just perhaps the distribution will be a little bit different. The best way to prepare for the ACT English section really is just to try some practice questions, uh, see how you do, and then if you have any questions about anything that you answer incorrectly, you know what to do. Just head over to www.mysterytutorvault.com, uh, post your issues in the relevant threads on the forum, and I will be happy to address them personally. There was no need for me, I thought, to go ahead and create 
um, further solutions to these questions because the questions in here are extraordinarily simplistic and uh, repetitive and the examples and solutions that appear on the ACT book are not as bad as they tend to be for the College Board book. So if you do have any questions though, you want to make sure that you head, like I said, over to mysterytutorvault.com and we will take care of those uh, ASAP. And like I said, that's it. Good luck and good test taking and remember, it's easier than you think.